It was yet another beautiful spring morning in Equestria. The sun slowly rose in the horizon, flooding the peaceful town of Ponyville with its warm glow. Ponies slowly woke up as the peaceful light entered their homes and illuminated their surroundings. Slowly, minute by minute, the town started to come to life. Ponies walking out of their homes, greeting the sweet embrace of Celestia's light as they went upon about their lives. Shops opening one by one as the Pegasus ponies parted the clouds just as scheduled, and one Pegasus pony in particular was watching from afar on a stray cloud, the element of loyalty, Rainbow Dash, brushing her mane to one side as she slowly stood up, breathing in the fresh morning air. Today was the day, her day off, but she had nothing to do, and she decided it'd be best just to stretch her wings first. That way, she'd be prepared for anything, whether it's more flying practice or another crazy adventure. Rainbow Dash peeked over the cloud, looking at the ground below her. She slowly flapped her wings, the cool breeze sweeping across her body as she jumped off the small cloud, descending to the ground in a daring nosedive. Just meters from the ground, Rainbow used on used a firm thrash of her wings to level out before pulling up again. The tension in her muscles loosened as she stretched her legs in mid-flight. Rainbow weaved and rolled through the air as she navigated her way through the streets of Ponyville, before she caught a glimpse of the burning sun warming her fur. A radical idea then entered her mind. She used her momentum to throw herself up, using her wings to maintain her velocity. Rainbow Dash ascended towards the glowing star, blasting past Cloudsdale and beyond, using nearly all her strength to remain at the blistering speed. Just as the heat was becoming unbearable, Rainbow retracted her wings, allowing gravity to pull her down again, and using her body, she moved herself into yet another nosedive, gaining speed as fast as she was losing altitude. The adrenaline started pumping through her veins as she blasted past Cloudsdale, visibly almost impossible to see. Rainbow then saw the town through the clouds. She tensed her wings, ready to pull out of her deadly descent. Meter by meter, she could smell the fur... Splash! Rainbow Dash jumped to her feet as her beautiful world was shattered around her. Startled, confused, her vision was just a blur. She frantically looked out, looked around, trying to focus on her surroundings. The room was cold, dark, and a strong smell of sweat and stale urine clouded her senses. The ice-cold liquid thrown on her fur was making her whole body shiver involuntarily as her heart began beating out of her chest. As Rainbow Dash tried to steady herself, she slipped, landing hard on the concrete floor as a dull ringing started to echo in her ears. Sen? Rainbow gasped as the foreign yet strangely familiar language echoed through the room. She tried to stand up, but her legs were burning, her whole body weak as she gasped for air. Her vision soon began to clear, and she noticed a pair of dark, glaring eyes staring deep into hers. She jumped back, not knowing what was staring at her, to find out that her hooves were chained to the wall behind her. She tugged as hard as she could, yanking at the steel binds before fatigue settled in, making her weaker than a newborn kitten. Tears began to form in the corners of her eyes as she tried to make sense of what was going on. She dragged her head along the ground to look back at those piercing eyes, still as close as they were before. Then it spoke again. Interessant. Rainbow Dash couldn't understand what the hairless creature was saying. She just kept staring into those eyes before it stood up on its back legs, still not breaking eye contact. Rainbow could see that it was fully clothed, wearing a dark, long green jacket covered in badges and medals. On his left arm was a strip of red fabric, a white circle and a black cross, or a crooked X, in the middle. Rainbow assumed it was a soldier of some kind, as she could understand that medals were given to brave stallion soldiers in Equestria. She looked around the room to see the same strange logo on his arms, that was on his arm, was on a large flag in front of her, and on posters around the room. Her heart sank as she noticed splashes of both fresh and dried blood across the room, on the wall, and on the floor, and on the strange machinery that surrounded her. 
and then the horrifying reality struck her like a bolt of lightning. It was a torture chamber. She was busy Americana, ja? As it stepped to one side, Rainbow saw another creature, just like it in the distance, tied to the wall like she was. It was covered head to toe in cuts, gashes, and bruises, moaning in agony, blood pouring from the large wounds. Rainbow watched as it looked at her, with tears in its eyes, before turning to yank at the chains, grunting hysterically in pain at every firm tug. Come on! Come on! Rainbow's eyes widened. It spoke English, like she did. A sense of relief eased her mind, but as she tried to call out to it, she realized she couldn't speak, as an unbearable thirst erupted in her throat. She tried again, but it was hopeless. Her throat was sore, and her condition wasn't going to make it any easier. From the tone of its voice, Rainbow guessed it was a male, whatever it was. At least, that's what a male pony sounds like in Equestria. But why was he tied up? What was he doing there? What was she doing there? Before she could ask herself another question, the foreign voice yelled at the soldier across the room, echoing through the room, sending a cold chill down her spine. Kill the Americana! One of the soldiers behind the decorated general pulled out a sharp blade and walked up to the prisoner before grabbing his head and holding the blade to his throat. Rainbow Dash could do nothing but watch in horror as the wounded man screamed for mercy. No! Please! I beg of you! I, I have a family! Don't, don't kill me! Don't kill me! Please! Rainbow tried everything to scream out for help, but her throat was too sore. All she could manage was a faint squeak as the soldiers lifted the prisoner's head, exposing more of his throat, laughing like a cheesy game show host. He was shown no mercy as the blade ripped through his delicate flesh, severing veins and arteries as his blood splurted across the room and onto Rainbow's face. The soldier threw the prisoner to the ground. As his blood pooled onto the concrete surface, the crimson fluid quickly created a large puddle, staining the petrified Pegasus's coat. She whimpered in terror, curling into a ball and holding her head in her hooves as she closed her eyes tight. What was happening? Was she in a dream? Did Twilight send her into another dimension? Or was this all some kind of messed up hallucination? Thoughts raced through her mind as she began to hyperventilate. Don't hurt me. Don't kill me, she thought to herself over and over again. She just wanted to wake up from this terrible nightmare, to sit up in a cold sweat in her cozy bed in Cloudsdale. But it felt all too real for it to be a dream. She opened one of her eyes to see two soldiers in front of her, both grinning and laughing as they watched her quiver on the floor. One of them stood forward, its face covered in blood, as she began to wave the bloody knife in front of her. She tried desperately to back away as it got closer and closer to her muzzle. She took one last look at the still twitching prisoner sprawling on the floor, and she felt a part of her die inside as she watched him reach out for her as his life slowly drained from his eyes. Tears went out pouring onto the floor as Rainbow looked at the madman in front of her, breathing through his mad grin, laughing all the same. She closed her eyes, praying that she be granted the wish of at least a quick and painless death. Boom! An explosion blasted through the thick walls of the dark room, sending pieces of flying debris and shrapnel through the air. A large table was thrown across the room before it crashed beside Rainbow Dash, before she covered her face, being bombarded with small rocks hitting her whole body. She trembled in fear as she listened to the shouting and screaming of her captors echoing around the room. She opened her eyes and saw a large hole in the wall in front of her. Five silhouettes ran through the cloud of dust and into the dark room. As her eyes adjusted to the bright light in front of her, she could see the dark figures attacking enemy soldiers using their machine guns to take down her captors one by one. Rainbow Dash dove behind an overturned table next to her, taking cover as bullets showered the room. Die, you motherfuckers, die! A loud roar came from the leader of the group as he pistol-whipped the general across the face, making an, un an unearthly snap as teeth and blood sprayed across the room. 
The destruction seemed to go on forever, as Rainbow Dash whimpered in the dark shadows of the table that she leaned against. When the dust settled, they regrouped around the prisoner. Rainbow Dash peeked around the table, now riddled with bullets and shrapnel, to see five soldiers standing around them and see one soldier throwing his weapon to the floor in anger. Fuck! He yelled before seeing a wounded soldier nearby. He ran across the room before grabbing the only one who was alive. You son of a bitch! He began to lash out at the wounded man, throwing punches to his face, every blow echoing off the stone walls before he was pulled away by two of his colleagues. The leader then ran across the room, roughly grabbing the infuriated soldier by the scruff of the neck before pushing him against the wall, shaking him and shouting in his face. God damn it, Dixon, knock it off! He's dead! There's nothing we can do, all right? Get your head back in the game. Go check the exits and cool off. The captain slowly let Dixon uh, go, watching the soldiers as he picked up his gun and ran out of the room. The leader went back to his team and knelt down, looking at the remains of the prisoner in front of him. Blood fresh on the floor, his body covered in debris, splinters, and dust. How long? He sighed. No more than five minutes. Damn it. God damn it. Dixon! How are those exits? I'll clear out here, Captain. Looks like these bastards are on their own. The Captain stands up before taking a look around the room, clenching his fists before sitting down with his team, with anger and frustration clear in his face. Okay. Here's the plan. First, we clink. Rainbow Dash darted back behind the table, her chest heaving, sweat beating, uh, bleeding from her forehead as she held her breath. Her heart sank more and more as the silence grew longer. The captain then stood up, looking at the large table in front of him. What was that? What? I saw something move. Over there. Rainbow's heart skipped a beat as the captain cocked his gun. She could he hear his footsteps walking over the broken glass on the floor. She couldn't do anything to stop herself from sobbing hysterically. She firmly covered her mouth with her blood-stained hooves, stifling whimpers, <clears throat> escaping her mouth as she tried everything to be silent. But the captain was already aware of her presence. There's someone behind the table. Rainbow could hear the troops quickly move around the room before it was quiet once again. Just barely audible footsteps of the approaching soldier echoed through the room. <clears throat> the captain then lowered his voice until it was a gentle whisper, which was strangely soothing to Rainbow's ears. Hello? Are you okay? Come on. Come out slowly. We won't hurt you. Rainbow Dash winced. She had nowhere to go, and she wasn't sure if surrendering was the safest option. She knew she didn't have the strength to fly, and that she would probably get shot down if she did. She had no choice. Rainbow scooted to her right, ever so slowly, leaning towards the light as she lifted her hoof up to her chin. Rainbow mustered then all her bravery before she slowly pushed her hoof into the light. The soldiers gasped, or grasped their weapons tighter as they saw a blue, blood-stained hoof peep around the corner. What the fuck? Rainbow panicked, and was quick to pull her hoof back as the captain turned around, a menacing scowl growing across his face. For fuck's sake, Bishop! So sorry sorry After a long sigh, the captain turned back to the table, taking a deep breath before taking one step closer towards the table and reaching out into the, into the shadows. Come on. Take my hand. It'll be okay. I promise. Rainbow saw his hand creep around the corner. She was scared out of her wits, but his reassuring tone gave her the encouragement she needed. She slowly reached out and pressed her hoof against the captain's palm. He paused, confused. It felt strange to him. The blue linen was warm, and the colorful fur was soft. He slowly grasped it, feeling muscle and bone underneath. He wanted to rip his hand away, shouting, What the fuck? But 
he kept his composure and cleared his throat, making the timid hoof flinch. <clears throat> okay, now come out slowly. It's going to be fine. The captain held his breath, not knowing what to expect as the creature gingerly limped out into the open. The captain jumped as he saw a large pair of magenta eyes staring back at him. He raised a hand to his team, bringing them down slowly, signaling to the soldiers to lower their weapons. Despite the obvious shock, he continued to slowly guide the cyan creature out, ears pressed flat against his head as the soldiers saw Rainbow Dash for the first time. Whoa. A deathly sil silence shook the room as all the soldiers stared at the creature before them. Rainbow Dash was still shaking in fear, unsure if they were going to help her or hurt her. She could barely stand on her own, and she felt hungry, thirsty, like she hadn't eaten or drank anything for days. As Rainbow Dash tried to stay on her hooves, the captain leaned closer, unable to believe what he was seeing. Still hol holding the uh, gory hoof, he gently started stroking it as he looked deep into her eyes unable to dismiss the nagging feeling that an animal was responding to what he was saying. Can... Can you understand me? At first, he hesitated, looking at the floor. But he soon looked up again. As... Rainbow Dash began to speak. <clears throat> it took a few attempts until she used all of her strength to faintly wheeze the words. Yes... The captain recoiled in shock, as did the soldiers behind him. The strange cyan creature just spoke. Her voice sounded so dry, so frail. The silence seemed to last forever, until the captain was first to speak. Jesus Christ. Rainbow Dash was unable, unable to repeat her sentence. Her mouth opened, but words didn't follow. She tried one last time, before she resorted to a, a gentle nod. The captain then turned to his team stood behind him, uh, who stood behind him with dumbfounded looks on their faces. Andy, get the water. Bishop, see if you can't get these chains off. The shortest soldier in the group ran across, taking his backpack off before pulling a small bottle out of it. The second soldier was close behind, walking next to Rainbow Dash, before looking, taking a closer look at the chains. Andy then gave the bottle to the captain, and Rainbow watching the metal container as it opened in front of her. The captain held the bottle out in front of the Pegasus before tilting it whilst pressing against her lips. Rainbow didn't think. Her instincts took over as she quickly gulped down the ice-cold water as quickly as she could, like a baby lamb being given a bottle of milk. Tears of relief now flowed down her face as the refreshing liquid pooled down her neck, gently massaging the dry cracks in her throat. The sergeant looked at the chains, then pulled out his machete. Rainbow heard the blade as it was pulled out of a sheath and jumped away, just as Dixon sprinted through the door with a look of panic on his face. Sir, we've got company! What the fuck? What is that? Where, Dixon? Uh, uh, north! North! The captain immediately jumped to his feet, looking out the window, where he saw a convoy of trucks in the distance. His heart raced as the oncoming platoon drove closer and closer to them. Ah, oh, shit! Move! While Rainbow Dash was stricken with fear, the sergeant holding the blade used one, frim one firm swing to break the chains binding her to the wall. Before she had time to flinch, bullets began to shower the room around her. The captain then returned fire before running to the exit, waiting for his men to follow. Sergeant Bishop then turned to Rainbow, who was covering her head with her hooves. Can you move? What? Can you move? Y yes, I, I think so. Then stay behind me. Don't fall behind. Got it? Got it. Despite the fact that seconds ago she could barely stand, a sudden surge of adrenaline gave Rainbow Dash the strength she needed to keep up with the sergeant. As soon as they regrouped with the team, the captain sprinted out in the open, shooting at the enemy as they returned fire. Rainbow Dash's eyes strained in the burning light as she continued to run. Bullets flying past, some as close as a few centimeters away, 
as wisps of air, of hot air surrounded her. Barely able to see who or what was in front of her, Rainbow dashed everything she could to keep up on the sandy surface. The soldiers then drove, dove for cover, just before Rainbow Dash followed, as her eyes once again adjusted to the light in the shadows. She could see that she was on a large beach, and the enemy soldiers were coming from the south, still firing their weapons, as they were only a few hundred yards away. Rainbow looked around her, at her surroundings, to see that she was in an abandoned trench surrounded by old collapsed buildings. What? Get down! Rainbow was pulled down, just as an explosion shook the ground, filling the air with dirt and debris. She was on her back, staring into the sky as the dull ringing in her ears got louder and louder. Suddenly, the captain was looking down at her, shouting her face as she was picked up off the ground by Sergeant Dixon. As she was carried across the battlefield, numb, disoriented, and her hearing slowly started to come back to her as the captain shouted at his team, We can't afford to make any mistakes! We need to call an evac as soon as we can! But sir! Andy yelled, his voice no louder than a faint whisper compared to the destructive destruction which surrounded them. They're going to follow us back! The captain paused, trying to think of a solution as he opened fire on the enemy once again. Rainbow, still disoriented, watched as the shells from the gun appeared to move in slow motion as they fell to the ground. The soldiers then dove into a pit, taking cover as Dixon placed Rainbow on the ground. The captain then quickly reloaded his weapon, bullets showering from the air as he turned to Sergeant Dixon. All right, you get to the top of that small cliff over there as we cover you. Bishop, you do the same in those trees over there. When you get to your positions, take out as many foot soldiers as you can. Use your shotguns to scatter them and fire your pistols to take them out, one at a time. Hopefully, they'll think they're in a shitstorm and it's waiting for them. And then they'll pull back giving us enough time to run to the trees. You got it? Yes, sir! Go! Sergeant Dixon and Bishop both ran out for cover as the remaining three soldiers aimed and fired. Rainbow watched, lying on the floor, as Sergeant Bishop sprinted across the beach towards the trees. They continued to fire the opposing enemy as they took cover in the trenches. Bishop was first to make it to the forest. Dixon only seconds behind him. Reloading! The captain ducked into the sandy pit, his hands shaking as he grabbed another clip. As he pushed the magazine into his weapon, he caught a glimpse of the cyan creature in front of him, those large medenta eyes staring at him once again as if they were looking deep into his soul. A stray, bu a stray bullet then scratched his cheek, making him wince in pain before he stood up <clears throat> to fire, letting out a primeval roar as he fired his gun. Both Dixon and Bishop were now in position looking at the enemy down their sights as they both fired upon the enemy. Soon, the opposing soldiers did just as the captain had predicted, and they began to break formation, looking for cover as Dixon and Bishop both began to pick them off one by one. Meanwhile, Rainbow Dash, overwhelmed and still confused, began to crawl up the walls of the sandy pit, fear driving her body to push her weight around towards the top. When she finally made it to the top, before resting her head on the ground, her senses cleared, her eyes widened as the reality of what was happening around her finally sunk in. She watched as enemy soldiers screamed in fear and pain before they were shot down one at a time. Her mind raced as she saw bullets rip through flesh, shrapnel tearing through their bodies as blood sprayed across the battlefield. Rainbow watched as the captain continued to fire upon the soldiers, showing not a hint of mercy. She covered her eyes in horror, but soon looked at her hooves. The blood now staining her coat had painted her body a dark crimson tone. She began to shake as the stench filled her nose, reaching her senses. She recoiled, falling down the sharp hill before landing on the wet sand below, getting the wind knocked out of her. She dragged herself along the ground, gasping for air, those gruesome images of the men being slaughtered in front of her eyes. She pulled herself towards a large puddle before staring into its reflection. It was the first time she had seen herself in this strange world. Her face was almost completely covered in blood. She looked at herself before she started to scream hysterically, stamping on her reflection and using the dirty water to try and wash the gory stains off her face. She crubbed, scrubbed furiously, her cheeks burning as she could feel herself getting weaker and weaker. She collapsed onto the ground, shaking, feeling physically sick as all of what had just happened 
and she had seen, everything she had just witnessed, proved all too much for her mind to cope with. She found herself slipping away, a tear, her tearful eyes slowly closed as she finally let herself drift into a deep and dark sleep. <laughs>